guys, what's going on? We are out here doing a little planter fishing and we already got one fish in the box. So stay tuned because it's going to be a fun day. Look at those palm trees. Damn. What you got? First king of the day on the planer. And we didn't even know this fish was on for a solid five minutes. I don't know about that long. In the box. Gaff right to the head. Yeah, that was a good gaff shot. Thanks. All right, so this is what we got going on. We have a bonita strip to a hook to this little squid to a sea witch on top. About a 30 foot leader connected to a planer. What the planer does is it goes down into the water and gets your bait deep in the water column. If you're not trolling on the surface of the water, your bait is further down in the water column. It's actually more like a 50 foot leader. to the fork and this one's probably more like 26 so it's a keeper. Jesse, two kingfish in one day. Two kings, one day. So we decided we we're gonna switch it up and try to wreck fish and get some big baits to drop down on the wreck like some blue runners. What'd you catch? Uh, a little almaco jack. A little almaco jack. So we're catching baits at this point right here but we have this big storm coming on us so I don't know how long we'll be able to stay out here, but we'll see. <laughs> the temperature just dropped like 10 degrees and it started to blow. What right. you got, Vic? I either have a bonita or a blue runner on that we could possibly drop back down on the wreck on a vertical jig. Look, we're working solid. Like, oh, there's your bait, Chris. Oh, there you go. There's there you go. your bait. Chris dropped down that giant blue runner that Victor caught on the wreck and he is hooked up to what I think is a shark but we don't know for sure yet. How's it going Chris? Not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Kicking my butt. He lost it. That'll be five dollars for their weight. telling the difference between juvenile kingfish and Spanish mackerel because of the fact that kingfish have spots when they're smaller and then when they start to get bigger 
they start to lose the spots and they're not as distinct as they are when they're smaller like this. Which, yes, this is in the mackerel family, but this is a kingfish, a king mackerel. All right, so I'm gonna flay this guy up now and I'm gonna start from behind the head. Cut across. And then take my knife and just slide down the bones. Now, a lot of people don't really care to eat kingfish. They kind of have a bad reputation as being a fish that is kind of a trash fish or a fish that you just smoke and you can't cook it on the grill or fried or anything. People, you normally just smoke them. But they're a fish that if you eat on the first day, they're actually very good. Or the second day, but it's not really a fish that you put in your freezer and eat months later. It doesn't really keep well if you freeze it. Smaller ones are definitely better too. The bigger ones start to get a little mushy, but the smaller one has super firm meat. And once I get this filet off, you'll be able to see that the meat's pretty darn white. Sometimes I think it has even more flavor than your typical white flaky fish because it does have a little bit more oil content. Yeah. Now for the worst part of a kingfish. They have very, very thin skin, so it's pretty hard to skin them. It's not like a snapper that has a thick skin and you can just glide down it. It's very thin and you have to try really hard not to cut through it and go through the skin. So I ended up missing a little skin right there. But I'll just go back and cut that off. Now they also have a decent bloodline down them and there's also a bone line here. So I'm going to cut out that bloodline. So we caught this fish like three hours ago. Here's the fillets and I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So I always fry my fish in breadcrumbs, but I'm gonna try something new tonight and I'm going to try a beer batter recipe. So let's get to cooking. The first thing I'm gonna work on is some homemade tartar sauce. So I'm gonna slice up some onions and dice them up into nice little small pieces. Next, I'm going to chop up some pickles into small pieces. And for this, I prefer a dill pickle over a sweet pickle. Now for how much onion and pickle to add, that kind of depends on what you like. Some people add shallots, some people add scallions, capers, mustard, whatever you really like. Now I'm adding about an equal mixture of half mayo, half sour cream. Squeeze a little bit of lemon juice. You can season to your own taste, but I prefer a lot of black pepper, and then I also added a little bit of dried dill weed. Our tartar sauce is done. I just stirred it up and put it in the fridge until I was ready to use it. Now I'm gonna do the last finishing touches on my fish and I wanna chop them, make sure there's no bones or bloodline left. And I wanna chop them all about to like this size and make sure they're all around the same size so that they'll cook at the same time. Now we're to the fun part of our beer batter. I'm gonna start with a full cup of flour. Pour my flour into a larger mixing bowl and now I want to add my dry ingredients. I seasoned the flour with pepper, salt, garlic powder, and paprika. Next, I scrambled up one egg and poured that into my flour. Now, it wouldn't be beer battered without some beer. The beer provides a carbonation that when fried gives the fish a nice crispy outside and it also adds a slight flavor. I went with a Bud Light, a nice light beer that I figured wouldn't be too bitter or too sweet. Don't forget to save a sip for yourself. I actually ended up not being happy with how thick the batter turned out so I ended up adding a little bit more flour to thicken it up. Once I was happy with my batter, I dipped my fish into the batter and then straight into a pan with some hot vegetable oil. I flipped them once I noticed the bottom side had a nice golden brown color. 
Now with anything I'm frying, I always take it out of the frying pan and set them on some paper towels to soak up any excess oil. Nice golden brown and they smell really good. Here is the final product. This was just that one small kingfish that made this much fried fish. And I ended up having some extra batter, so I just sliced up a couple more onions and put them into the batter, into the oil, and made some onion rings. Well, I definitely have to say that beer battered fish is a lot better than just plain old fried fish. It was flaky, it had a nice crunch to it, it was flavorful, that kingfish is an oily fish, it didn't dry out, it stayed together, it was really good, I really liked it. Alright dad, what'd you think? Well, I uh, had already eaten dinner and they called me to try this beer battered fish and uh, I, I couldn't believe how good it was. I never even used to try and fish for kingfish because everybody told me they weren't that good. I'll tell you, this kingfish tastes as good as about any other fish that you can put on your plate. Prepared properly, it's delicious. As a connoisseur of um, fish and chips, I'd say it pretty much blows any pub fare out of the water. I mean, it was golden, flaky, and crispy, just the way you imagine it to be, and it was cooked to perfection. Mom? Long live the king. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have thought something as simple as beer battered fish could be so good, just phenomenal. We just demolished an entire kingfish in two seconds. It was really, really good. And it was a good change because all week we just got back from a big trip in the Bahamas and all week we've been eating a bunch of tuna, raw tuna, we had poke, we had seared tuna, and then we tried blackening it. We had it broiled or baked or we made tuna fish salad out of it. And so like this fried fish was really a good change because we've literally had fish for lunch and dinner almost every single day this week. Well, I'm very surprised this was my first time doing beer battered fish. I will definitely be trying it again. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video and also to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.